going to do a couple of quick introductions. Um, my name is Catherine Stinson Kessel from Red Flags Traffic Systems. I am Australian. I'll put that to rest because people stare at me thinking, no, you're not. <laughs> I have lived in your fair country for three years. I married an American fellow who was born and raised in Ohio. Um, his family now live in the Ross County area and we live just south of Columbus. Um, but I did spend eight years in London, England. Um, so my accent may not be as broad as a, it's not a Steve Irwin kind of accent, put it that way. Um, and I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Mark Etzbach. Hi, I'm Mark Etzbach. I'm a regional sales director with Redflex. Uh, I first started with the company back in January of 2001. Uh, I've had a lot of experience in the industry, photo enforcement. So as we go through this and you have questions, I will be more than happy to answer all those for you. Well, we're going to do what I've instructed them. Because you're going to make your presentation. And after you make your presentation, then we're going to give off some time to ask some questions. Great. Fine. Um, and just from a housekeeping perspective, Redflex have been notified. We have about 30 minutes. Do my best to keep on track with that and honor that, and then I think we have the questions and answers after that. Um, I have brought in a number of information packs. I did actually bring about 16 or so. The number might slightly exceed that. I'm going to pass these down, and if you feel like you need one, please take one. There are cards inside, and I have extra on top. Um, so should I keep the lights on? Redflex owns 
continue with our overview, we're going to talk about the global presence, um, the fact that we're the largest pure play company in the industry. Um, the term pure play, what it really means in simple terms is that this is all we do. Our sole focus, our sole purpose, our sole reason for being is simply to provide communities with public, um, public safety presence and to work with them to help to enforce those programs. Um, we need to talk a little bit uh, about the evolution of technology, web film versus digital, how that's come to be, why it evolved, and where we're at with that, um, in terms of our dedicated skills, resources, and our back office functions, call center, and violation processes. Um, in terms of the evolution of technology, certainly back in the very early days of automated enforcement, um, web film was the only thing everybody used, okay? It had its downside, but on the plus side, the resolution was fantastic. Bar none, it was a very good picture that was being captured. The, the downside of the wet film, it was very laborious. Um, in order to be able to um, capture those images, you actually had to literally go up to those intersections, take down a film, put up a new one, go have the film developed, have somebody review it, and then send it out. So it was quite laborious. It involved you know, the work of Redflex, but also the city staff had to get involved. So you know, there was a lot of work to be done on that. So what happened is over time is obviously digital technology increased, uh, became better, um, and we needed to make a decision as to how we would work that migration path. Um, the migra migration path in its early days was the, the pixel resolutions were obviously much lower than they are now. Back in the day when digital first came to being, it was more like what you see on your cell phone now, which is pretty good, by the way, but it's not fantastic. Um, so over the years, that digital has now progressed so we get fantastic image quality and clarity. Um, but in addition to that, it's a very seamless and a very easy way to run the technology because it's all really very fully automated. Um, dedicated skilled resources. The reason I've highlighted this as part of our overview is because Redflex has multiple departments that help run our overall operation. And none of those departments commingle or overlap. And what I mean by that is if you are working in the, the call center operation, that's your sole function. Your job there each and every day is to pick up that phone and answer inquiries from either our clients, okay, or either from a disgruntled person who's just received a citation in the mail. And no matter how accountable we are for our actions, everybody wears a little pain when you get a ticket. Most people aren't particularly happy when they get them, so a lot of them will actually phone through to the call center. So they're dedicated resources. The same for those people who are working on our violation processing. They have two screens available to them and they're looking at a violation in action and then they have next to them what we call a set of business rules. The business rules will be unique to every city. You'll all have your own reasons for how and why you'd like to see a citation issued. Um, those people will never pick up the phone and take a call from somebody who's disgruntled because that's the call center's job. So it's a dedicated resources and functions. In our headquarters in Phoenix, we have some 350 employees and it's in an 80,000 square foot facility, which is quite a long shot from where we first came when we first the inception of this company, and we'll go into that as well. So th these what's somewhat overlay. So our account management, call center, and violation process as well. So this is an example of the pie of the market share that Redflex traffic systems own, and the rest of the market share is divided between several other competitors. Uh, the blue in this picture is where we have presence, where we have programs that are operational contracts. The red cities are states where they have disenabling legislation. So at the state level, um, they actually set the tone, made a law that said actually we're not going to entertain the idea of automated traffic enforcement. And the white ones there are sort of somewhat a works in progress. The state at the House and the Senate level are still considering actions to be taken as to whether or not they enable it. So these areas are kind of a works in progress right now. Um, this is just a picture of the corporate office. As I mentioned, it's 80,000 square feet. Um, if you would ever be lucky enough, and we always recommend January, February as being the times to come, if you're ever lucky enough, we'd be more than happy to entertain you out at Phoenix and have you um, come through our premises and our facilities. In terms of where the violations of the printing room takes place, it's almost like it's a Kinko's office in and of itself. Um, I was there about well, earlier this year in February, and very sadly, one of the machines had broken down they were waiting on somebody had come back out and fix it. And in that time alone, it was 10 a.m. in the morning, there were 40,000 violations.